The beginning of summer in New England means NASCAR has come to town to race at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway, a mile track as tough as the granite this state is known for. After a few weeks apart, the NASCAR Nationwide Series races at the same track as the Sprint Cup side, meaning the boys are back. Someone else is back, resuming her stock car try after a couple of months focusing on Indy cars. On the line today, an amazing record. In 23 New Hampshire races, no driver has ever won more than once. And while there are some great candidates to end that streak, including the circuit's hottest driver, there are also some great candidates to keep it going. Who gets the glory today in the Granite State of New Hampshire? Nine, 10, nine. ESPN welcomes you to NASCAR Countdown for the first race of summer. 200 laps for the NASCAR Nationwide Series at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway in Loudoun, New Hampshire. What was supposed to be a wonderful start to summer in New England with a forecast of a 30% chance of an isolated shower? Well, the radar shows that shower's not so isolated and may be headed this way. 78 degrees right now, only 50% humidity at the moment, but we are hopeful, despite the looks of the radar picture, of uh, getting this race on time, underway, and to its completed distance. You will see, though, that there is a blob of rain heading this way from out over uh, Vermont Way. And again, we hope to get this thing going on time and get it to its full scheduled distance. This is always one of the busiest race weekends of the year. Just today, track activity started at 8.15 Eastern time this morning with NASCAR Wayland Modified Series final practice. Then it was Nationwide Series qualifying at 10 o'clock. Brad Keselowski is the fastest. More on qualifying in a minute. There have been two practice sessions for the NASCAR Spring Cup Series, the last one from 11.45 to 12.45. And then the Wayland Modified Series race, 100 laps on this track. It just finished moments ago. That's Ryan Newman in the lime green colored seven car. Teddy Christopher in the 36. A great late race fight with Newman coming out on top. That car owned by Sprint Cup Series crew chief Kevin Mannion and Ryan Newman climbing out in victory lane just moments ago. All of that before we even get to the green flag for the NASCAR Nationwide Series race. Here are the fastest qualifiers and the top 10 starters for the Nationwide Series 200. The top two in the championship sharing the front row, Keslowski and Edwards, with Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick right behind. Some young drivers making noise in qualifying. Steve Wallace, Austin Dillon, the ARCA champ Justin Lofton, and Ricky Stenhouse all in the top 10. More and more, yeah. 25, 30 times in a year, making that commitment. We know that she has the talent to do this. Now she needs to make the commitment to come over here and do this on a more regular basis, and we'll see the results get much better. Danica heading out to join the other drivers at introductions. Her car parked on the grid as uh, we get set to go racing here in New Hampshire. 200 laps for the NASCAR Nationwide Series on the Magic Mile. Well, Lots. It's like when AB's coming to the pit yeah. studio. That's yes. what, listen, just like that. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> I have yet to experience that. <laughs> we'll be back to New Hampshire. From Freedom Trail on the sides of historic Boston to the beautiful mountains and lakes of New Hampshire. Always good times to be had in these parts at this time of the year. Summertime in New England also means racing at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, where again thousands of fans have come to see their high-speed heroes in action on the Magic Mile. The green flag just 41 minutes away for the 24th NASCAR Nationwide Series race at this track. Race 16 of the NASCAR Nationwide Series season will be race 7 in this series for Austin Dillon, the 20-year-old grandson of 12-time champion owner Richard Childress, giving the Childress 21 car a drive today. But it's one of the few times we're going to see this very pedigreed car race for the rest of the year. RCR has been one of the dominant teams in the Nationwide Series for much of this decade. Won the Nationwide Series championship seven times, three driver's titles with Kevin Harvick and Clint Boyer, and four owner's championships, 55 wins since they began competing in this series in 2000. Second most this decade. This decade. But Doc, due to a lack of sponsorship, this is one of only a few times we're going to see this car this summer. Austin Dillon starts eighth. 20-year-old Austin Dillon is the grandson of legendary Carl and Richard Childress in Austin. Today, you strap in that famous number 21 car that's won so many championships. Uh, what best describes this day for you? Is it pressure to perform or opportunity to shine? 
You know, I think it's a big opportunity for the Bass Pro Shops team. Um, we're coming out here. We haven't ran a nationwide race all year. We qualified eighth, which was good, and I got my truck guys helping me out. And uh, we're going to go out and have some fun today, and, uh, you know, we'll see what we can do. Hey, good luck to you. Thank you. Allen, he qualified eighth, and, uh, but the learning curve could be very steep here today in the Nationwide Series. All right, Doc, thank you. Austin Dillon, part of a group of young drivers in today's race, looking to make their names more known to you and prospective sponsors in the sport. The group of drivers competing for Ray Bestis Rookie of the Year recently had their driving skills tested in a different kind of way. Uh, my name is Sergeant Ruby. I'm with the Matthews Police Department. The reason why we're out here today is we're going to put you guys through the Law Enforcement Drivers Training Program. So when today is over, Colin and Ricky will know how to drive? You're all three going to know how to drive. <laughs> you ready to get started? Yes, sir. All right, let's go. I'm going to get a turn lap. I know, I know. Hey, y'all, watch <laughs> this. <laughs> Combs. About to move the seat up. Go, go, Rich, go. I feel sorry for the cones right now. <laughs> I think I can save it. First run, gotta be smooth. We gotta buckle up. Buckle up for safety. Daisy. Oh. You drove two footed, didn't you? Yeah. You exactly. drove two footed. The driving two footed. Hey. Well, thank you for coming out today and taking part in the uh, law enforcement driver's training program. See that? Junior officer. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> The good officers at the Matthews Police Department there have not been watching the Nationwide Series because these three young men have hit everything on the racetrack <laughs> that could be that's not moving. They have had a tough time with some of these race cars this year, but young Ricky Stenhouse Jr., all these guys have a great opportunity today to clean all that up, not run over anybody, and get their wheels back on. Well, maybe that driver training will help. Yeah, well, <laughs> <I hope. laughs> we're right. going to see. Let me take a serious turn here for a minute. Last week, Richard Childress laid off employees from that 21 Nationwide Series team, including the crew chief, Dan Deeringhoff, because of a lack of sponsorship. We'll only see this car run at Daytona next week. We won't see him again till Bristol to the end of August because of a lack of sponsorship. That's a pretty tough statement right now. Yeah, it's really tough. And Richard Childress is one of my heroes. You know, I'm a car owner, and I, I always try to model myself after Richard Childress. He's the standard bearer, an independent guy who's kind of done it by pulling up his bootstraps and fought his way to the top. And when you see a guy like that struggling uh, to acquire a sponsorship, it means it's tough for all of us. So uh, I wish him the best. He's been nothing but excellent for this sport. Uh, Austin Dillon, a young driver trying to work his way up the racing ladder through his start here today. But we've also seen this nationwide series is used in another way, established Sprint Cup drivers kind of trying to maybe rehabilitate an image. You've been that way before. Yeah, I've been there. You know, sometimes your cup career is not going exactly like you wanted. And I found myself in that very position uh, in 1989. At the end of the year, sponsorship was going away at Kel Yarbrough's. Uh, I had no ride, and it was too late to get a new one. Uh, one for, so I had to go back to what was the Bush Series at the time with my own race team. Uh, fortunately, uh, I had an opportunity to come along with the Wood Brothers that basically resurrected my career. But you get just like Elliot Sadler's doing here you know things aren't going as well for him on the cup side he's wanting to take this opportunity in 10 races to show people yeah I can still drive give me that opportunity so that's what the series is for you have two different ends of the spectrum veterans that are looking to resurrect their career and then these young guys trying to prove themselves Sadler with an uncertain future on the Sprint Cup side at this moment beginning a 10 race run in Junior Motorsports 88 car we saw Dave Burns standing there with him to talk Dave of course the last time Elliot raced in the series 2009, just one race that year, and it was right here at Loud, New Hampshire. Finished 18th that day for Braun Racing. So today, after a couple of days of practice, how do you feel in the Nationwide Series? I'm glad to be back in it. It's uh, we've had a lot of fun the last two days. I've had a lot of fun working with Pops, and my first time working with Junior Motorsports, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. We had to, I messed up qualifying a little bit off turn four, lost some time, but actually in race stream, I think we're gonna be pretty good. I can't get past the irony. You're trying to make your career kind of stand out here, and you have a camouflage sponsor. Is there any irony in that? But 
it's a good looking camo. <laughs> All of Real Tree's camo looks good, and uh, it's neat that Bill Jordan and I have been good friends for a long time, and he's such a big supporter of the sport. And we've been on hunts together that actually are shown on ESPN uh, coming up this fall, and we get to do it again, going to Mexico again, do some elk hunting. So it's cool that he's on board this weekend, and um, it's his support that he's given uh, not only Dale and Kelly uh, and their whole team, Junior Motorsports, but also me as a driver. So uh, a lot of fun. We're going to run good today. The car does look good. My instructions from Dale Jr. was keeping it in one piece. So uh, we'll see how that works out for us today. All right. You guys mentioned it earlier. First of 10 races for Elliott. We wish him luck today. Alan? Uh, we'll keep an eye on the 88 car if we can today. <laughs> uh, it's not often you come to a track where the crew chief has more laps of experience than the driver, but that's the case here in New Hampshire for championship leader Brad Keselowski and his crew chief, Paul Wolf. During his drive career, Wolf made 11 starts at this New Hampshire track in NASCAR's k and East Series. Four top five finishes there, plus one nationwide start. Vince Welch with the driver and crew chief of the championship leader. Well, all those uh, successful results as a driver for uh, Paul Wolf has helped his driver, Brad Keselowski. He'll start from the pole here today. Paul, as a driver and having had success at a racetrack like this, how does it help you now in the crew chief seat here? Well, I don't know how much it helps. I'd like to think it does, but uh, I've, I have had some success here in the Bush North car. And, uh, you know, when I come here, it's kind of like coming home for me uh, as much as I run here. So uh, I don't know. At one point in practice yesterday, Brad called me the expert. So I, I don't know what that meant, but uh, um, have a lot of fun here. And um, I feel like we've got a good Ruby Tuesday dodge for the race today. Well, it certainly has been good so far. They were uh, fastest in qualifying, sitting on the pole. Now, does he, he tell you how to drive it, or he just tell you how it should feel? Well, I was a little lost about what I wanted. So I said, I don't know, Paul. You're the expert here. So uh, I, I think that was pretty cool. But, uh, you know, our car was pretty good. So it was the same car we had at Richmond. Um, even wearing the same fire suit, got the same engine in. Should be a good week. So uh, we're ready to get going. Yeah, it worked out all right at Richmond. They were a dominant winner on that particular day. A.B.? All right, Vince, thanks. Keselowski starting on the pole. Coverage of Major League Baseball continues tomorrow and Monday night. First on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball at 8 Eastern, Joe Girardi's Yankees head west to take on Joe Torre's Dodgers as part of the ALNL showdown presented by State Farm. Then on ESPN 2's Monday Night Baseball at 7 Eastern, two of the game's brightest rookies face off Steven Strasburg leading the Nationals against Jason Hayward and the Braves. Major League Baseball on ESPN tomorrow and ESPN 2 Monday also available on ESPN3.com. Um, Strasburg can throw the ball, can he? Yes, wow. sir, he so can. Good, man. We will see if Brad Keselowski can maintain the sizable gap he holds in the Nationwide Series championship standings or if things will take a turn in a different direction as Carl Edwards gets some awards from his Road America win last week. More of NASCAR Countdown when we return to New Hampshire Motor Speedway, where one of the traditions <laughs> is towing your stuff in from the campground in a wagon and hitching he's it to the fence. Than he's older than most of our nationwide drivers. Get that man a contract. <laughs> hey, give me a pen. GoDaddy.com Chevrolet from Roscoe, Illinois, Danica Patrick. Driver introductions ongoing at New Hampshire Motor Speedway a minute ago. Tanika Patrick being introduced as the countdown continues towards the once a year NASCAR Nationwide Series race at this track. Kyle Busch certainly one of the favorites to take the win today. He starts fourth and is the defending winner of this event. One year ago, Kyle spent much of the second half of this race chasing his Gibbs teammate Joey Logano. But with 35 laps to go, Kyle made the move, the 18 by the 20. And despite Logano trying to close in traffic over the late laps, Kyle had enough to reach the checkers first and become the 23rd different New Hampshire Nationwide Series race winner. Let's hear from Kyle Busch before today's race, Doc. Alan, a three weeks uh, three week summer sabbatical for the Nationwide Series over for Kyle Busch. And they're welcome back, by the way. Unlike the other 42 drivers in the field, we're glad to see you back. I appreciate it. It's good to be back, you know, in the Z-Line Camry. We're looking forward to it. i got to ask you, this place is so tough to pass on. You made it look easy a year ago. What's the key to setting up and executing a pass? Uh, well, sometimes you don't make it work exactly the way you want to. But, uh, you know, for this place, you got to be able to have a good, secure car that gets into the corner well. You can get on the brakes hard. You can still turn the center. And when you step on the gas, it accelerates forward instead of spinning the tires. So, I mean, it's not just one particular thing that will get you a pass here. It's, it's all three of those. Hey, good luck today. Thank you. Alan? Kyle Busch starting in the fourth position. He'll certainly be one of the favorites. Now, after last Saturday's Road America race, the crew chief of the 18, Jason Ratcliffe, had words with Brad Keselowski that insinuated the driver of the 22 had a payback coming from a late race incident that might have cost the 18 drivers there, Brad Coleman, a chance to win. Keselowski's in there. Oh, boy, too oh, far oh, really in there. In there. The leader bumped aside. Keselowski goes through into the number one spot. I went in there as deep as I could in the one. 
He flat out pile drove me. I'd like to say that I met her on him, but I really just don't know what I'm doing on a road course. I'm trying not to cry right now because I'm really heartbroken. I just got into him and apologized to him, and uh, you know nothing that I'm going to say is going to make it right for him. If a guy's really sorry, he, he doesn't come back the next week and do it again. You know, that's not the first time that's happened with that particular driver, and I felt like it was time to go down and have a little meet and greet with Brad and just tell him where I thought he could do a better job, not just at Road America, but in general. And hopefully you listen. I'll give Jason full credit as a crew chief that supports his driver. I don't think he was, at the time, confused at what happened. From my end, I didn't think it was an incident. I just thought it was two cars making contact. All right, so you saw the incident. You heard from those involved. Does Brad Kozlowski need to be looking over those shoulders today <laughs> for payback? Uh, I'd say definitely he needs to be paying attention to uh, the cars that are around him because it, uh, they, this Gibbs group seemed to be uh, very intent on uh, making a payback of some sort, whether that happens today or down the road. Uh, we'll have to see how the circumstances. But, you know, Brad puts himself in these positions, doesn't seem to mind that. He's ready to handle whatever's going to come along and whatever those consequences may be. But, Brad, one thing that we've seen last year and kind of this year, whenever we've had some problems on the racetrack, there's one guy named that's kind of in the middle of it. Huh? Well, I tell you, that line behind him is getting <laughs> awful long. Uh, there's a lot of people <laughs> taking a look at Brad Keselowski. And, and the thing I like about it is he is the number one guy. Uh, he does what he has to do to put him himself in position to win. He worries about Brad Keselowski and no one else. Some people may see that as selfish, but he sees it as an opportunity to win a championship. I don't think he's really worried about the 18, the 20, or anyone else. It's another one of those let them race things to keep an eye on Angler as the right. season yep. unfolds. Right. Man, those little wagons, we saw the kid getting towed in a yeah. minute ago. Yeah. We got one of those outside to take you over to the take booth. <laughs> uh, got a better view over there in the booth anyway. May take a while to get there. Yeah, it might take a while. So we appreciate it. We'll talk to you in just a little bit. Right now, let's go back to the grid. Davis with the fifth place starter. And he's got a red and black wagon here, which might be pretty quick today as well. Justin Allgaier got only a second start here, practiced well, qualified fifth. Are you the guy to build on the streak of different winners here? Well, I don't know if I'm the guy to build on the streak of different winners, but we got a great Verizon Dodge today. The guy's done an awesome job. And, uh, you know, we felt like yesterday we were a top five car and we qualified fifth, so it's a great day. But Nationwide does such a great job here and, and, and having these races at, at New Hampshire. I mean, we have so much fun. And if the modified race was any indication as to how good our race was going to be, uh, it should be interesting to, to see how it plays out. A lot of two by two uh, battles. So we're looking forward to it today. We just need to get some points back that we lost last week, and hopefully we can do that. The young Penske driver looking for his second win of the season. Alan. All right, David, thank you. Will someone like Allgaier steal the headlines today? Will there be a payback? Will DJ make it to the booth on time? <laughs> the answer to these and other questions. A lot of questions. AD. When NASCAR countdown continues from New Hampshire. Oh, now we're talking, baby. Where's my butter? <laughs> season of racing uh, today, the NASCAR Nationwide Series for 200 laps. Our Jayski news and notes now. This New Hampshire track and its now owner, Bruton Smith, have been locked in a dispute with local police officials over the cost of police services provided during race weekends here. Track wants to privatize its security operation. Town says no. Track says town's price is too high. Town says its costs are appropriate. You decide. The dispute and some of Smith's other comments have ramped up speculation over whether or not one of this track's Sprint Cup races will be realigned to one of Smith's other tracks, like Kentucky, for example. NASCAR says the deadline's approaching this week for that application to be made. And Michael Waltrip Racing announced Wednesday that Quebec native Patrick Carpentier will drive a Napa-sponsored Toyota in the upcoming race at Montreal on August 30th. Finally, a sad note, Raymond Parks, one of this sport's founding fathers, passed away last Saturday at his home in the Atlanta area. Parks was part of the meeting at which NASCAR was formed, won the inaugural championships in both the modified and what is now the Sprint Cup Series, and fielded cars for some of the sport's all-time great drivers. We remember Raymond Parks. He was 96 years old. And as we get set to go racing today here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, we go back down to the grid and Vince Welch. Thank you very much, Alan. And uh, of course, uh, Rusty Wallace's son, Stephen Wallace, has had a nice little surge of late. He's eighth in the points, three straight top tens. Things have gone well for you guys as you've kind of gotten it turned around and pointed in the right direction. What's been the key to the recent insurgents? Well, I feel like we've been doing a lot of testing lately, and I feel like that's played a big part of it. Uh, you know, kind of not tearing cars up has really helped us a lot, too. And, uh, you know, as you said earlier, we've had three straight top tens, both cars have, and, you know, I feel like we're, you know, kind of gaining some big momentum. So, uh, you know, uh, we unload her off the truck here really good and qualify good. And so far, it's been a good weekend. You know, hopefully, this thing, uh, you know, hopefully the rain will stay off and we'll have a good run today. Stephen Wallace, he'll start sixth today, and his teammate Brendan Gons had a couple of pretty good weeks as well, AB. Yeah, I certainly have, Vince. Thank you much. Uh, what determines who wins and who doesn't today? 
may well be determined not on the track, but on pit road. Let's have a little strategy session now with Dr. Jerry Punch. Doc? Thank you very much, Alan. You know, each week you hear us talk about the importance of track position, and most crew chiefs will tell you of all the 25 tracks they compete on, this one has to be in the top two in terms of being most critical here. Now, if you take a look at what happened here last year, in this race a year ago, Carl Edwards was leading with less than 50 laps to go, and he came in for a pit stop, but they had trouble with the right front tire. They had trouble getting the right front tire off, and they dropped the lug nut. Now, Carl would finish the stop and eventually go off of pit road in eighth position. He finished the day six. He just simply could not make it up. That's how important track position is here at this racetrack. Now, today is a 200 lap race. The fuel window is 80 laps, so you could make it on two fuel stops. But the critical call could be a two tire stop with 50 laps to go, giving someone track position and possibly a win today here at New Hampshire. AB? All right, Doc, we'll keep an eye on the fates and fortunes on pit road today here at New Hampshire and how they uh, help uh, impact the outcome and the final results. Quick look at our motorsports calendar. The Summit Racing Equipment NHRA Nationals qualifying tonight at 7 Eastern on ESPN2 with the finals Sunday at 7 Eastern, also on ESPN2. NASCAR now tomorrow morning, New Hampshire pre-race edition, 8.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPN2. Next weekend, the Nationwide Series on to Daytona for the Subway Jalapeno 250 Friday at 7.30 Eastern. And the Eyes on IndyCar Series at Watkins Glen July 4th in the afternoon on ABC. We're coming right back. Plates say live free or die, and history runs deep dating back to colonial times. Conquered the capital city, sits just south of the track, just to the north. The beautiful lakes region, Lake Winnipesaukee, 182 miles of shoreline, a wonderful place for a summer sail. But on the first weekend of summer, New England's largest sports stadium is the place to be. As we get ready for the NASCAR Nationwide Series, racing at New Hampshire Motor Speedway for the 24th time. We go trackside now for the opening ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and remove your hats as the Salem High School Air Force Junior ROTC Color Guard presents our nation's colors. Please remain standing as Pastor John White of the Church of the Nazarene in Loudoun, New Hampshire offers today's invocation. Our Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise for the opportunity, the joy of being in this place this afternoon. Father, I pray your blessing upon each person who is here. I ask, Lord, your hand of protection on every driver, every crew member, and everyone who has come to be a fan today. Father, as we will soon rise as one as the races begin, as the engines start, I ask that we would also rise at the end to celebrate the joy of the one who crosses the finish line and celebrate with everyone who crosses as well. And now, Father God, as we also celebrate the fact that you are our Lord. We rise as one, and we say in the name of God our Father, Amen. Now, please welcome Los Angeles-based recording artist Ashley Alexander. She returns to her home state of New Hampshire and performs our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the i 
So will it be a 24th different nationwide series winner here in New Hampshire or will the streak be broken today? Some good candidates both ways. The engines fire next. NASCAR Nationwide Series.